Today our topic is usage of language in logical reasoning in philosophy and critical thinking. So let's see uh, <clears throat> what the role of language is in uh, making the logical reasons in philosophy and critical thinking. So let's see usage of uh, language in logical reasonings. We use uh, <coughs> language uh, is to reason. Uh, it is uh, this use of language with uh, which logic is primarily concerns. So the use of language to reason is the main concern in the logic and philosophy uh, related to language. The purpose of logic is to improve our critical thinking. So why we uh, imp wanted to improve our uh, uh, logic so we can improve the uh, our critical thinking. And as we know, the critical thinking is to recognize, construct, analyze, and evaluate the arguments. So the use of language is to reason is the main uh, concern of the logic and philosophy and to improve the use of language ultimately improve our critical thinking as well so for this reason we uh, study the uh, language in philosophy uh, as we know logic deals with the analysis and the evaluation of the argument so we uh, analyze and evaluate argument uh, on logic. Since arguments are expressed in language, the study of arguments required that we should pay carefully attention to language in which arguments are expressed. So this is uh, basically the language is a tool uh, through which we, you know, uh, argument or reason and expects in some language. So it is very important that we should know the language and language has very language has very importance in logic and philosophy and critical thinking <coughs> language and uh, logic continue the formal pattern of correct reasoning can all be conveyed through ordinary language but then so can a lot of other things are also involved in that so in fact we use language in many different ways some of which are irrelevant to any attempt to provide reasons for what we believe so it is helpful to identify at least three distinct uses of uh, language number one is informative use of language which is which is for information and then expressive use of language and that is for expression and then directive use of uses of language is for direction or giving the orders so let's discuss one by one uh, number one is informative use of language the informative use of language involves an effort to communicate some content when i tell a child the fifth of the may is a mexican holiday i write to you that logic is the study of correct reasoning or just jot a note to myself Jennifer 555-3769 I am using language informatively so these are the some of the examples of uh, how we use inform <coughs> informative language this kind of use presumes that the content of what it is being communicated is actually true so it will be our central focus in study of logic so information should be uh, true and truly expressed so the next uh, kind is the expressive use of language so we use the language to express ourselves in the previous one we want to give the information or content this one we want to express ourselves an expressive use of language on the other end intend only to vent some feeling or perhaps to evoke some feelings from other people so we use this language to uh, <clears throat> express our feelings to get other people know about the feelings are we sometimes we evoke other people that they will express their 
feelings. So we uh, provoke them uh, that they will say something about themselves. When I say Friday afternoons are dreary or yell which I am uh, using language expressively. So you know I am expressing something about an event or of a day or something uh, or you know like maybe after Friday afternoons are really hot it is or yell which is if some I feel some pain or I have got hurt so I'm using language expresses the although such uses don't convey any information they do <coughs> serve as an important function in everyday life since how we feel something matter as much as or more than and how <coughs> and what we hold to be true so this is basically we using language to express our feelings uh, to others it you know it, maybe it is information it have some information or some information no but sometime it has information at least we express our feeling in uh, through the language the third kind of uh, use of uh, language is directive so as it sounds from his word is when we are giving the direction so finally directive use of language aim to cause or to prevent some overt action by a human agent when i say shut the door or write read the textbooks or memo myself don't uh, rely so heavily on passive voice i am using language directively <clears throat> the point in each of these cases is to uh, make someone perform or for or for first uh, a particular action so we uh, we, in, we are using this language to ask someone to perform something or not to perform something this is a significant linguistic function too but like the expressive use it does not always relate logically to the truth of our belief so uh, you know it, it is very important to function of ling language but uh, like expressive way doesn't matter maybe it, it, it couldn't be uh, logically or true for of our beliefs uh, use of language types so the intending use in a particular instance often depends more on the specific context and the tone of the voice than it does on the grammatical form or vocabulary of what is this said so sometimes uh, we see the use of language so what is intended and and what is the context and the tone of the voice is not its grammatic things it in other, i think we have in one lecture we have said said that it is like what is meant by what we are saying the simple declarative sentence for example i am hungry for could be used to report on a physiological condition or to express and feeling are implicitly to request that someone feed me so this is in fact uses of two or more variety may be mixed together in a single uh, utterance stop that for example using involve more the expressive and directive functions jointly uh, in many cases however it is possible to identify a single use of language that is probably intended to be primarily function of a particular linguistic unit since <coughs> we uh, do in do in fact imply language for many distinct purposes we can minimize confusion by keeping in mind what we are up to uh, on any particular occasion so we have divided language into four into three different uh, uh, usage but it is not necessarily that we will use this separately maybe in one sentence or in one thing we use more than one uh, type of uh, language or uh, you know maybe we give the directive or also give the information so this is the ex this is the example i have just uh, mentioned in this uh, uh, slide the next issue is the literal literally or emotive uh, meanings of the language even single word or short phrases can exhibit their distinction distinctions 
between purely informative and particular and partially expressive uses of language. Many of the most common words and phrases of many languages have both a literal or a descriptive meaning that refers to the way things are and an emotive meanings that expresses some positive or negatively feeling about them. So thus the choice of which word is to use in making a statement can be used in hopes of evoking a particular emotional response. So uh, we use different words to get the different purpose and they have uh, some literal meaning and as well as motive meanings. Literally means is the meaning of that word in a dictionary meaning and a most motive meaning is when we are mixing it with our emotions or feelings. This is a natural function of ordinary language of course. We often do wish to convey some portion of our feeling along with the information. So for example we if we want to uh, have em uh, emphasize on the importance of the information we maybe use our feelings in it that it is very important for us to do this or do, don't do that. Uh, this is the information uh, is a sad information or is a, a joyful information there is a good deal of uh, poetry in every day's communication and poetry without motive meanings is pretty dull so we you know we feel we express our feelings uh, through poetry and so and with poet and in, in that we uh, mix our emotions uh, as we know that without the emotions poetry is just very dull but when we are primarily interested in establishing truth as we are when assessing the logical matters of, matters of an argument the use of words laden with motive meanings can easily distract us from our purpose so but when we are uh, trying to establish some truth so use involving or you know mixing our emotions with that may distract uh, us from the real uh, truth so these are the you know uh, literally meaning of language or the motive meaning of the language so when we <clears throat> sometimes we use uh, motive meaning motive things in our language and sometimes we don't it depends on the purpose of our uh, reasoning or purpose of giving information or what kind of uh, information or language we want to use since we have uh, discussed that uh, a motive uh, use of a motive language may distract us as from the truth and maybe we take away from the real purpose or the real thing of the um, matters so we want to develop a motively neutral language mutually you know, uh, neutral language simply is that any say any language which has no emotions so for our purposes in assessing the validity of deductive arguments or reliability of inductive reasoning it will be most directly helpful to eliminate motive meanings entirely whenever we can so we have to make a pure language without involving any emotions although it doesn't it isn't always easy to achieve a motively neutral language in every instance and the result often lacks the <coughs> colorful character of our usual public discourse it is worth the trouble and in stupidity mean because it makes it much easier to arrive at subtle understanding of what is true I, as we know you know uh, <coughs> without without emotions are uh, the our language become uh, you know a, a very dull or colorless so you know but uh, to reach to a subtle understanding of what is true we have to try to be uh, use a uh, motionless emotionless or very emotion neutral language in many instances the informal fallacies which we are going to discuss in the next uh, topics uh, result from an improper use of emotionally charged language in the efforts to pursue someone to accept a proposition at an emotional level without becoming convinced that there is a legitimate grounds for believing in it uh, to be true so sometimes we uh, we purposely involve emotionally that to to convince people to uh, you know 
about some reasoning even though those people you know we, even those those this reasoning is not very true but emotionally which we usually call it emotional blackmailing so we in our relationship <clears throat> we use our emotions to convince people uh, to do this thing or not to do thing and maybe they are not very logically or reason or reasonably logic reasons to convince someone but you know emotion has its parts uh, it, it, it has its part in to play to convince something so uh, but again uh, if you want to be logical or reasonable or rational we have to be developing a uh, motively neutral language so this was the <clears throat> Uh, lecture for today so how we use the language to do the reasoning and uh, how the language is part plays part in um, uh, philosophy and critical thinking